and then we can move into New York. Yeah, well, we're here at uh, in Herald Square in uh, New York City at the intersection of, uh, of uh, Broadway and 6th Avenue, uh, just north of 34th Street. Uh, to my left here is 35th Street, the statue um, that commemorates uh, James Gordon Bennett. Uh, uh, again, this is Herald Square. It's one of the Bowtie Parks uh, situated between 32nd and 35th Street, here right in front of uh, Macy's flagship store in uh, the Fashion District in Manhattan. Uh, again, the two bowtie parks were created as part uh, as, at the intersection of, uh, of Sixth Avenue and Broadway, where they actually cross over. And many would argue that these are two of the busiest pedestrian spaces in the world, with tens of thousands of people passing by each morning and each afternoon, making their way to their places of employment, making their way home, making their way to. Uh, uh, to the transportation that surrounds us. Well, what we had done years ago, uh, just uh, less than a decade ago, is we were part of, uh, we, we led the consultant team with the Business Improvement District, the 34th Street Business Improvement District, in transforming these existing parks back to what they are today. Uh, if you go back 10 years, these parks were neglected. They were uh, places to avoid, uh, basically because of their physical characteristics. So when you look around, and as we look around over the next couple of minutes, you'll see a park that's been in heavy use, or two parks that have been in heavy use for about 10 years now. As part of the restoration of this park, Wheelie Square Park, the planters on the perimeter were extended, were expanded, um, and raised to create this platform for installing a lot of the perennial and annual plantings that are here and the shrub material, it creates a greater buffer to the folks that are sitting in the movable ta on the movable chairs. Uh, that buffer, even though one may, one, many would think is, uh, is somewhat minimal, does provide enough space to make this a comfortable space to sit uh, and catch up on some work, you're reading your cell phone calls and so on. But the green, by raising the planters and providing that enhanced root zone, we're able to get a rich palette of plant material. And again, it's almost November. You can see how successful the plants are still, uh, how the plants are still performing. But it provides not so much noise, certainly a visual break that make you feel like you're in a special place. Another important component of um, redefining spaces in the city and enhancing spaces for people, reflecting on the city's history and culture. In New York City, you have tremendous uh, tourism base. And uh, you know, people passing by, walking on the cross streets, they see monuments such as the monument here in Herald Square and the monument we take a look at down in Greeley Square, and they'll wonder what. What is that for? What, what are we interpreting? And they're inclined to come in and read and see what's happening. And uh, you want to reflect on that. You want to build on it because it is an important element. You know, tourism in, in all cities is important. And if you're seeing here up on the uh, the monuments, or I should say, on the pedestals to our right and left. Um, these owls, the owls of knowledge, which were actually cast off of the masthead of the Herald Tribune, which was uh, one of the local newspapers uh, published in this area, and the owls are from that um, are from the actual masthead of the publication. So you shed a little bit of history on uh, on the park, a little bit of culture. It draws people into the space by drawing people into the space of all different uh, uh, backgrounds. It makes the seating experience all that much more uh, attractive because you have different folks to look at, different people to see, to see and be seen. So it's, uh, it all adds to the experience. So anytime you have an opportunity to bring a little culture and history to your parks and to your public spaces, however small, it's an advantage and it, uh, it enhances the, uh, the pedestrian park experience. Now if we scan over to the left, you'll see a part of, a part of Broadway that's been playing for pedestrian space. This was traffic. Just a, uh, just a few weeks ago, and it's been restored uh, or recaptured for pedestrian space. The traffic lanes were eliminated. Now you can imagine that before that was added on, and these parks were constructed nine, ten years ago, the majority of these people would be sitting within this park. And now Herald Square, and we had, uh, I would argue again, was uh, was a key part. In, uh, in enhancing the whole pedestrian experience in the whole shopping district. And you can see that that success has just uh, bled out to the neighboring streets. 
and uh, it's something that people have become accustomed to and the success of having movable tables and chairs is really uh, really taking uh, um, built a lot of momentum here in the city of New York. It's great coming back after a number of years and seeing how successful these spaces really are uh, and that's probably one of the most rewarding things that you can experience as a designer as a landscape architect is coming back to a space 10 years after it's been constructed and seeing that it's still functioning, functioning as originally intended.